a day to remember for the rest of your lives. There's a great promise for all of you. The Pro Football Hall of Fame and Extreme Networks present the Heart of a Hall of Famer program. With nearly 100 Hall of Famers participating, we have reached 48 states around this country, sharing the message that football is more than a game and can teach Americans how to huddle up during a time when we need to be united. It's time for America to take a real deep dive, not at no one else, but at yourself individually. If you want to change America, don't brush your teeth with your head down. Look at who you are and be the example. Be the example. An opportunity to meet and learn from one of the greatest football players of all time. But more than that, the chance to see that their Hall of Fame life wasn't given to them. Single parent homes, drug infested neighborhoods, and poverty. I grew up in a neighborhood that was considered one of the worst in America. And the household I grew up in was one of the worst in that neighborhood. By the time I was 20 years old, I knew at least 30 friends or family members who had lost their lives. Football became like a second parent to me. It taught me the things that my father wasn't there to teach me, and that my mother as a struggling single parent woman just didn't know to teach me. But they learn how to live a life of character before pursuing their football careers. Today, you will learn you can do the same that they once did. Making good decisions can lead to a prosperous life both on and off the field. Your game for life has already begun. It's your decision whether or not you want to be a successful student, son, daughter, brother, or sister. Every one of you can have a Hall of Fame life whether or not you play football. You can be as great as you want to be. The Hall of Fame is all about integrity, character, and excellence. You have the opportunity to represent yourself that way. You determine your character. Welcome to a once-in-a-lifetime program, the heart of a Hall of Famer. Maybe all these fine compliments are true, but one thing I can assure you, that every time I stepped on the field at Municipal Stadium and later at Arrowhead Stadium, I did it with the knowledge that I was representing the Kansas City Chiefs. And I knew what it meant to a million and million Americans across the world. I did play the game with passion. I did play the game with respect. And I played it with a lot of heart. But perhaps the most important reason I'm here, I played the game with a lot of respect, honor, that the game so very much deserved from everyone who has ever had the privilege of strapping on a shoulder pad or buckling up a chin strap. It's simple, ladies and gentlemen. I respect it, and I still respect the American values that our great game stands for. And with that, I'd like to welcome everybody to another edition, a first edition of this school year of the Pro Football Hall of Fame's Heart of a Hall of Famer series powered by Extreme Networks. I'm here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, my good friend, Mr. Thomas, who we'll turn it over to in a second. Uh, but we're here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame home to this weekend's 2019 Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic featuring Morehouse College and Alabama A&M, the first one held right here in Canton, Ohio. Both of those schools are historically black colleges and universities, and we'll get into the impact of those schools that they've had on the Hall of Fame in Mr. Thomas's career, uh, both as a player and now as a Hall of Famer in a little bit. But I am proud to welcome, like we said, Gold Jacket Emmett Thomas today uh, here as a part of this program. My name is Jake Ray, and I'm the Youth and Education Manager here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Our mission here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame is to honor the heroes of the game, to preserve its history, to promote its values, and to celebrate excellence everywhere. And those values we promote are those are a commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and excellence. All of those values we're gonna talk about at some point today 
and how important they are in the game of football. I'm excited today, and hopefully all you guys out here uh, as part of the program are as well. Um, but before we get started, I do have a few thank yous I'd like to pass along. First of all, I'd like to thank our partners at Extreme Networks for all they do for us here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame and for schools across the entire country. Secondly, I'd like to thank our teachers and administrators who opened their classroom or auditoriums to us today. I know it's the beginning of school, so it's a, a very important time for everybody. So thank you for allowing us to come into your classrooms today. And lastly, and maybe most importantly, I'd like to thank our students. You know, without, the, without you guys today, this program doesn't happen. So we want to thank you guys for, for being a part of this program today. So with that being said, I'd like to turn over for some opening marks for Gold Jacket Hall of Famer, Mr. Emmett Thomas. Go ahead. Okay. Yep. Uh, thank you. I'd like to say thanks to the Hall of Fame for inviting me here and also to have Mr. Ray here with me to get this through. And I'd like to have 20 seconds of silence just to uh, think about the ones that's been affected by uh, the hurricane and those who might be uh, affected later. Okay, I'm extremely happy to be here and I don't want to lecture to anyone. I know when I was you all of age, I didn't want the speakers coming around tying up my time speaking and, and stuff like that. So I know you got a lot of questions research you've done on us, the Hall of Fame, and I'd like to open the house up for any questions and maybe we can ask them for you. All right, I think I'll, think I'll start here with the first question. Um, we talked about those values, commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and excellence. Is there one of those values that, that means more to you or kind of sticks out above the rest? I, I, I think it's integrity. Uh, it, it makes you adjust with commitment and also uh, you have to have courage respect and you strive to, to do anything to be excellent at it so i think integrity is is, is the main uh word there in that group of, of uh core values there and uh and that that's one that resonates with me right now was there was there a moment in your career maybe when your integrity was tested or or that stands out to you where integrity was a, a big part of a, the decision that you made yes and i think you know integrity acts big in you picking your friend and uh, things are not going the right way it should be. It helps you to say no. And then if no not work, it helps you to be able to just walk away and get away from it and diffuse the situation. Uh, you promised someone you was going to do something or your teammate or someone that uh, you're going to be there to help them and you'll show up every time to do what you're supposed to do. All right. And with that, we're going to turn over to some of our students here. So I'm going to Go ahead and turn over to our students there at Alcoa. So go ahead and ask your question here for Mr. Thomas. What kind of sacrifices did you have to make to get to the NFL? Never knew uh, I was going to get to the NFL, really. And the sacrifices I made was nothing but the hard work and to stay out of trouble and then whatever and try to get a good education and whatever happened. Because, you know, you can be a good athlete at a young age and you might have reached your potential real early and then later on uh it's not there anymore so uh didn't have to do any sacrifice except just hard work and stay out of trouble all right looks like we got another question there at alcoa uh go ahead with your question as a child what events in your life do you believe help shape you into the man that you are today i can understand what events in your life helped shape you into the man that you are today? I think the death of my mother. I lost my mother when I was eight years old. I was from a single parent home. And then I was read by my grandfather and grandmother and a lot of help from other siblings. But uh, I think the death of, uh, of my mother really uh, helped me out a lot in being raised by my grandparents. All right, next uh, we're gonna throw it to Nolan Richardson School here. I'm gonna go ahead and unmute your microphone. Go ahead and step up to the mic and then ask your question. Hi, um, I'm the librarian here. Uh, we're, we're still getting some kids together with questions, but I just have a question for you is, um, Mr. Smith, uh, did, what university did you attend and what was that university experience like back in your time? Okay, I went to Bishop College in Dallas, Texas, which is defunct at this particular time. It's no, no, no longer open, but I went to a small Baptist uh, a, a college of about 1,500 students and I was a student uh, athlete there. And the thing that it taught me how to have core values that we, we stressed earlier, to work hard, 
and persevere and and make a lot of nothing. Now, you know, coming out of Bishop College, uh, you went undrafted to the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, we talked about this earlier, but was there a kind of a chip on your shoulder? You know, because when you were drafted, there were 26 rounds uh, of the NFL compared of uh, the NFL draft compared to the, the seven that we have now. Um, was there a chip on your shoulder going into that, that rookie year? Uh, not really. Uh, the thing that uh, really impressed me was the fact that I thought I was a better baseball player and to get an opportunity to go to the NFL and AFL and try to uh, make a football team was very exciting for me. I was in a conference with Grambling and Prairie View and Texas Southern. All those colleges and universities was much larger. Bishop was a little black Baptist college of about 12 to 1500 students. And uh, to get an opportunity to compete and to display your talents was enough for me at that particular time. Uh, I guess the chip might have came later on after I made it, but entering it didn't. Now, playing at Bishop and going to Bishop as a student, it is an HBCU, like we talked about at the beginning. Uh, what was your experience like uh, going to, you know, a smaller school uh, down there at Bishop? I, I don't think it was a culture shock due to the fact that I came from a rural area, uh, Angleton, Texas, which is about 30 miles, uh, 38 miles south of Houston. And I was used to a small uh, atmosphere. And uh, so one real, the more of a culture shock was me being away from home than being in the city. <laughs> Uh, was there any adversity you faced uh, when you were there at Bishop? Well, you know, I'm sitting here talking to you all, and I will tell you to make sure you surround yourself with good people and uh, be able to say no, and the last of all, be able to walk away if that's not enough. But uh, I've had my ups and downs, but I was able to uh, fight through it with the uh, teaching that I got at home. All right, we're going to turn it back over to some of our students here. Uh, we'll throw it here. It looks like we got some questions ready there uh, at Nolan Richardson. So I'll go ahead and throw it to you guys. Unmute your mic. Go ahead and step up and ask your question. Hi. Hello. Uh, one question. What character qualities do you believe it takes to be a Hall of Fame player? First of all, let's talk about being a Hall of Fame person instead of being a Hall of Fame player. A uh, Hall of Fame uh, uh, player is something that's, that comes that's unexpected. But regardless of what you do in life, if you become a good person and prepare yourself mentally with an education, work good hard work, you can be a Hall of Fame person or just a Hall of Fame dad or mom. So you don't have to be just a Hall of Fame uh, athlete. But I think cultivating your character, learn how to work hard and be honest with people, you can still be a Hall of Famer. All right, we're going to throw it over to our, our students there at Alcoa. So go ahead and uh, it looks like they have a student coming in. All right, they're coming in. We'll let it, give them some time here to, uh, to get there. And um, so while we wait uh, on the, our student there from, from Alcoa, um, we'll talk a little bit. You talked about being a Hall of Fame player. And, and now people know, obviously, you're, you're a Hall of Fame player, defensive back for the Kansas City Chiefs. But a lot of the folks might know that Mr. Thomas here spent just about 51 years in some capacity in the NFL, whether it was as a player or a coach. Um, what do you contribute that 51 years to? Does it just fall back to, you know, just loving the game? Or is there – did you just feel, feel at home in the league? I, I felt at home in the league, and I think uh, working, being having good work ethic, staying out of trouble, and uh, working hard and producing it. It was a, something that uh, I thought was a good setter to me being an ex-player and didn't really want to completely get away from it. And uh, I think it came in to be a good setter because then uh, it was very productive for me. Now, uh, we are on Facebook Live right now. So if you guys are watching via Facebook Live, feel free to submit your questions uh, there uh, in the conversation. But we just got one that came in here from Elsa. She asked, what lessons did you learn as a player that you used to inspire others once you became a coach? Uh, hard work, being consistent, being honest with yourself, preparing. Uh, those are the values that, that, that really uh, took me a long ways, and I think it'll take everyone else a long ways in any profession that they, that they go into. All right, we got some students back there now at Alcoa, so go ahead and unmute their microphone. Uh, go ahead and ask your question. How important do you feel accountability is on and off the field? I think accountability is part of the thing we talked about earlier about integrity. 
I think that you have to be accountable for your acts. If you tell someone or promise someone something, I think you should see it through, prepare yourself well, and be honest about the situation. All right, we'll throw it right there to our other student. Go ahead and ask your question. What advice can you give young people about how to develop a character? How to develop a character? Surround yourself with good people. Surround yourself with good people. People that work got a good work ethic and then doing the right things. Now we talk about you being a Hall of Famer. You know, you spent, like we said, 13 years as a player, 38 as a coach. Uh, when you were enshrined in 2008, you, you became a Hall of Famer. And when a lot of people don't know, when you get enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, you get three iconic pieces. You get the, the bronze bust that everybody used to see, you know, in photos online and everything. You get the gold jacket that Mr. Thomas has on here, and then that he gets that, that's made by Hagger. And then he gets our, our K Jewelers Ring of Excellence as well. But what everybody kind of knows is that bronze bust, that iconic piece. So right now we have Vice President of youth football and character development, Michael Munoz, standing live in our Hall of Fame gallery. And he's going to talk a little bit about what that bronze bust means and why Mr. Thomas here has one of them. So, Michael, are you there? Here, Jake. Thanks. Welcome, everybody. We're at the Hall of Fame gallery in Canton, Ohio. As you can see, there are busts all over this room. Um, there are 326 busts in this room. And to put that into perspective, there are 300 million people that have played the game of football at some level. 500 million have played collegiate football. Only 29,000 of those have either coached or played or administered the game of football. So 326 busts with Emmett Thomas being one of them. Emmett Thomas joined the Kansas City Chiefs as an undrafted free agent from Bishop College in Dallas, Texas in 1966. He excelled for the Chiefs for the next 13 seasons before retiring at the, after the 1978 season as the team's all-time leading interceptor. A five-time Pro Bowl select, selection, Thomas intercepted a pass in every season he played except his rookie year. Thomas was a key component of the Chiefs defense that won AFL titles in 1966 and 1969. He intercepted a pass in each of the Chiefs' playoff victories in the 1969 postseason, including two in the AFL title game against the Oakland Raiders and won in the Kansas City Chiefs 23-7 upset win over the Minnesota Vikings in Super Bowl IV. Following his 181-game playing career, Thomas began his coaching career. After two seasons in the college ranks, he moved to the NFL in 1981, where he began a long career as an assistant coach. In December 2007, he was named the interim head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. As you can tell, Emmett Thomas had a career well-deserving of a bust here in Canton. Jake, back to you. Thanks, Michael. Um, so far, since 2008 when you were inducted, what is the coolest part about having one of those gold jackets? I think meeting some of your idols, uh, some of the guys I admired uh, ahead of me playing or played against, and be able to create a friendship with them, and to be able to travel around and meet uh, and, you know, you, you admire people are fun, and then once you meet them and know what they're about, it, it's, it's really neat. All right, we're going to send it back to our students for some questions now. We're going to head back down to Nolan Richardson Middle School. Uh, so go ahead and step up to the microphone and then ask your question here for Mr. Thomas. Was there anything in your childhood that made you fall in love with football? No, not really. Uh, my love was really baseball. And... Uh, I later became uh, infatuated with football my senior year in high school, and that's when my uncle, A.D. Files, came back from service, and he talked my grandparents into letting me play, and then I started uh, really getting into football my senior year. Now, we do have pro I'll probably have a lot of athletes uh, tuning in today. Did you only play? Oh, you just said you didn't play just football in high school. Was it important for you to kind of play different sports to help you become better at each of them? I, I perfectly agree. I don't think you should specialize because if you play baseball, basketball, football, soccer, whatever you play, if you play all the sports, it give you an appreciation for all of it. It helps you train certain muscles in your body that you can use for different sports. And I think uh, if you're a well-rounded athlete or uh, participate in all the sports, it become handy for you, whatever sport you're really majoring in or like to be. All right, we're gonna send it back to our students there at Alcoa. Uh, it looks like we got two questions uh, ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute your mic and then go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yes. What was your 
What was your one of your best accomplishments <laughs> while you were in high school? When I was in high school, probably was uh, baseball and basketball. I made uh, all state. Uh, football, I only played one year. Now, that was my senior year, and I was a wide receiver. Uh, caught some touchdown pass, but nothing great. And like I said, I wasn't offered a scholarship in any of the sports. I was like a walk-on at Bishop College. And then after my freshman year, then I became, uh, uh, I got a scholarship. All right, uh, our second student there at Alcoa, go ahead with your question. Um, who are some of the players that remind you of yourself in your playing style? <laughs> Someone asked me that earlier today. <laughs> you know, the, the rules have changed. So uh, I would think Claiborne, that used to be with the Jets, I think now he's with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. They've picked him up. Uh, we played a lot of press coverage, a buff run coverage. Uh, Al Harris, who played with, uh, with, uh, Co with uh, the Packers and several other teams, uh, sort of played the way uh, I played. We were both tall and long, and uh, we pressed a lot. Now, both of those guys you just mentioned, did you coach? Both of those guys are having influence on them. I coached one of them. I coached Al Harris, and then we worked together uh, in, uh, in Kansas City. So uh, as a coach, uh, and you coached for 38 years, six different teams, the Redskins, Eagles, Packers, Vikings, Falcons, and then your Kansas City Chiefs. And all those years uh, of coaching, was there one important life lesson that, that you took away from coaching? Yes, the thing that I took away from coaching, you cannot compare yourself to the players that you're coaching. Or expect them to be like yourself. You got to let them be their own, find their own niche. But the thing you can instill them is being honest and a good hard work ethic. Now, you just, just retired uh, this year, right, uh, right after the Super Bowl. Um, so I was doing, doing some research before the program, and I came across some, some comments uh, about you as a coach. So I'm going to read a few here. Uh, current Chief stars Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill both simply just called you a legend. Uh, Hall of Famer Brian Dawkins in his enshrinement speech said, he would not let me settle for average. He would not let me settle for good. He saw greatness in me that I did not see. Hall of Famer coach John Madden said, there are two defensive backs I would never mess with, Mel Blunt and Emmett Thomas. And then uh, there was a, a Saints assistant who told your story at the 2019 NFL Combine. And on spending 51 years in the NFL, he said, you want to know why you spent that long time in the NFL? It's that you were very humble and you always did the right thing. Those, and that was just a few, what do those comments mean to you? It means a lot to me. Uh, when you can get those kind of quotes from your players and fellow co-workers and guys, of course, it raises a, a lot to me. And in my mind, I know I did it the right way. Yep, that's, that's exactly Exactly what, what we were thinking. So we're going to throw it back to some students now. We're going to send it down to Nolan Richardson. Uh, go ahead and unmute your mic and uh, go ahead and ask your question. How does it feel on Sundays to be able to play in the NFL? How does it feel? You're very proud. You feel good. Uh, I used to get real nervous before every game. And about maybe after the first five or six plays, then I would kind of mellow out or calm down. But it's very exciting and uh, very rewarding. All right, now we're going to send it over to our students there at Alcoa. Uh, go ahead and ask your question here for Mr. Thomas. Uh, could you describe your transition from like college to the NFL? What was your transition like coming out of college into the Chiefs organization? You know, it was easier for me because I had – I really had moved from position to position. Like I said, I played one year in high school. I went to college as a walk-on. I was a quarterback there for a couple of years. Then I was a receiver. Then my senior year, I became a defensive back. And then when I walked on with the Kansas City Chiefs, I was a part-time receiver and part-time defensive back. And matter of fact, uh, when uh, Coach Stram called me in, I thought I was getting cut. <laughs> and he made the statement that we're going to keep you on, uh, on defense. And then my defensive coach and defensive back co coach, Tom Bettis, took uh, me in his hand and kind of molded me into the player that I became. All right, we're going to throw it over to our, to our other student there who's got a question for you. Is it, is it, is it, all right, um, what set you apart from all the other players you were around? I think my work ethic uh, and the position I was playing, I was tall and I was blessed with, with a lot of speed.
need both but, of but, those. But I think the thing that really was that I had a hard work ethic. I worked hard, diligent, and I studied film. But I was tall and I had a excellent speed. Uh, going back to you know some of the stuff that that's going on uh, in today, uh, today's more and more specifically this weekend. Like we said at the beginning, uh, this weekend is the Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic held right here uh, in Canton, Ohio, at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. What does it mean to have a game like that? You know, kind of kicking off, help kick off the college season um, between two HBCUs here in Canton, Ohio. I think it's tremendous, and I think it it, it, it states and put you on stage and let you know you can get here. A lot of us take different routes, different universities, and different ways to get here. And this is where football started at. This is where the legends are housed at. And it gives a lot of lesser athletes a time to know that they can achieve what they want to achieve with hard work. And I think this is a good playground for that. And now the teams that will be playing will be uh, Morehouse as well as Alabama A&M. If you could stand in the locker room with, with either of those teams and give them one message, what would that message be? To compete, to compete and spread, and spread the gospel about how good it is to play up here and to get the exposure where it goes around the world. And a lot of unfortunate guys that can't go to college but might get a scholarship and can go to an HBCU and still achieve their, their thoughts and the things they want to be. Uh, so both these games are, this game is taking place on Sunday. Make sure you guys tune in NFL Network, kickoffs at 3.30. Uh, catch the game between Alabama A&M and m and Morehouse. Um, but more importantly, even on top of that, the Black College Football Hall of Fame, which you're a member of as well, uh, is now going to be housed right here in Canton, Ohio, as part of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And you talked a little bit about it, but what does that mean for not only players at HBCUs, but, but for members of the Black College Football Hall of Fame? It's, just, it's exposure. It's exposure. And I know some of the colleges that a lot of you young people never heard of, but they do exist. They do turn out college garages. They do turn out doctors, lawyers, uh, professional football, baseball players. So it's there, and there are a lot of highways and byways to get there, and you can achieve anything you want to do with hard work if you're given the opportunity. All right, we got time just for a couple more here. We're going to turn it back over to our students there at Alcoa. Uh, go ahead, and you got to decide who's going first. Go ahead and uh, uh, ask your question here for Mr. Thomas. What was one of your biggest or favorite memories when you were playing football? Uh, I, I think uh, one of my biggest moments is uh, when we did win the Super Bowl, we beat the Minnesota Vikings in Tulane Stadium down in New Orleans. But one of the other great accomplishments, uh, things that I ran upon is uh, I met uh, Paul Warfield and also Lance Alworth. And to say welcome to the NFL, I think Lance Alworth, I know he did, beat me for my first <laughs> NFL touchdown, and which I will always remember that. And then to meet him in person at an all-star game to see what kind of individual he was, uh, was very rewarding. All right, we'll keep it there at Alcoa uh, for our next question. What advice would you give high school students? Get your grades. Get your grades. Operate with good people. Be able to say no when no doesn't work. Be able to walk away from it and work hard. And don't just put everything in sports, okay? You can still be a productive citizen and a good person doing other things in life. Look at the gentleman here to my right. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, before we get to our, our next student question, here, I want to I want to read off a, a list of some stats. Um, Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2008, Kansas City Chiefs Hall of Fame in 1986, Black College Football Hall of Fame in 2016. Your number 18 is retired by the Kansas City Chiefs. Three-time Super Bowl champion, one as a player, two as a coach. A two-time AFL champion, a two-time league leader in interceptions, 12th all-time in the history of the NFL in career interceptions. So you can say you've had a pretty decent career. You had a pretty decent career. What do all of those honors mean to you? I've been blessed. I had a great career. But some of the remarks that you read earlier about some of the coaches and the players said uh, I was a legend. I did it the right way, and uh, I think 
the, the friendships that I've created and developed and the experiences that I've had traveling and through work has been astronomical. And uh, I just feel blessed and humble. All right, we're gonna send it out to Nolan Richardson uh, for their next question. So go ahead and step up to the microphone and ask your question here for Mr. Thomas. Um, did you ever take on a leadership role as a youth? If so, what was it? Did you take on any leadership roles when you were, when you were uh, their age in, in middle school and high school? No, I didn't. I was always an uh, undersized guy that uh, wasn't one of the big guys up around campus, so I kind of shied away from everything. But as I grew and got older, then I started developing it once I got into college. But in uh, junior high and high school, and I was probably the second field guy. <laughs> All right, we're going to throw it back to our students there at Alcoa uh, for a couple more questions for them. So whoever's up first, uh, go ahead and ask your question. What is your biggest life lesson you learned from playing football? How to work hard, work hard, create everlasting friendships in life, and uh, once you commit to something, stay with it and finish it. All right, we're going to throw it there to our next student uh, for another question there from Alcoa. What does it take to be a Hall of Famer? Luck. <laughs> good team, good team uh, mate. Uh, a lot of help. Uh, staying healthy. But like I say, you can be a Hall of Famer in more than just sports. You can be a Hall of Fame mother, father, uh, parent. If you're doing the right thing and get your point over to helping people. Uh, so I've had a lot of Hall of Fame people in my life that's not really here in Canton. But my grandfather, my two uncles, Andrew Fires and Doe Thomas, my high school uh, football and science teacher, those were my Hall of Famers in my life. You know, and it all takes somebody else to, to get you to where you want to be. And uh, you hear his enshrinement speeches all the time talk about high school football coaches and high school teachers and principals and families that live down the street that helped them, you know, get that gold jacket. It wasn't just career on the field. There were, there were people there to right. support him as well. No one does it on his own. I don't care how great he is on the field and the class one, but you, don't, you can't do it by yourself. You've got to get some help. And I've had help all the way. Um, how, obviously, like we said, we've, we've had a great career. So throughout all your successes, how did you stay motivated uh, to continue improving? Because if you don't, someone is always trying to catch you and bypass you. And each day you get up, you want to do a, get a little bit better, a little bit better, and be a better person. And I've been able to sustain by being around good people and good people helping me. Uh, so before we wrap here, just a few more questions. Um, class of 2019 had a, had a member. His name was Johnny Robinson, uh, mm -hmm. who you were two teammates with. Six of the 11 that played on your defense, that won that Super Bowl, are now Pro Football Hall of Famers. Um, what does it mean, one, to be a part of a team like that and to see a guy like Johnny Robinson uh, become a member of the Hall of Fame? And one of the questions one of the young persons just asked me, Johnny was our leader back there in the secondary. When we got there, it was about uh, 26 of us in camp trying to make the football team. And then that one thing that I admired about Johnny, he saw at least two of his teammates was going to be threatened by myself and another player named Fletcher Smith. And he never, never hesitated to help us try to be better. He had explained the defenses to us. Uh, when we would get our reps, he would uh, watch us and tell us what we were doing wrong, how we could improve. And uh, even though he knew we were going to beat out a couple of his buddies, he always still tried to help him become a teammate. And I really admire him for that. And I think he's a guy that was, uh, was long overdue. And I'm very happy that uh, he was able to join us and become one of the fraternity brothers uh, in the Hall of Fame. It's awesome, awesome. So I think we're going to go ahead and wrap today with one last question. Um, all those students we have watching today, everybody we have tuning in, on Facebook Live, what is one piece of advice you want the everybody watching today uh, to take away? To work hard, surround yourself with good people, be able to say no. If that, not, if that is not sufficient, be able to walk away. All right, I can't think of a better way to wrap up our first installment of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Heart of a Hall of Famer series. 
powered by Extreme Networks with Class of 2008 member Gold Jacket and the Black Jacket with, for the, the Black College Football Hall of Fame. Uh, Emmett Thomas, Mr. Thomas, thank you for being a part of uh, not only this program, but the other stuff that we've done today. It's, uh, it's a great honor for me, obviously, to get to sit down and talk and show these students, you know, what you, what you learned throughout your career. So for myself, uh, our team, our youth and education team, all the way up to President uh, CEO David Baker, we want to thank you for everything that you've done for the Hall of Fame, but also for the game of football as a whole. I like to say, you know, the game of football wouldn't be like it is today without guys like you who, who set, the, set the, the pavement, set the groundwork for all of those who, who came after them. So thank you for all you've done for us here at the Hall of Fame. And thank you all for you've done for, for the game of football throughout your 51-year career uh, in the NFL. So, again, with that, we're going to wrap everything up. For all of our students who tuned in today, all of our audience on Facebook Live, thank you. We'll be having a lot more of these. So we hope to see you not only in these programs, but we hope to see you right here in Canton, Ohio, home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame uh, one day. So, again, thank you, everybody. And we will talk to you guys later. Thank you.